So I'm Jennifer Lim and I'm an Australian artist uh, with uh, Singaporean heritage and I help people to enjoy um, a deeper connection to Asia through my original artwork. And in this short seminar today, I'm going to share some of the secrets of Peranakan tiles that I've uncovered uh, at Booker Brown Cemetery. Um, along the way, we might have some questions, so uh, please save them to the end and uh, we'll get on to them then. So today, all this tech is a little bit new to me. It might be new to you too. Um, so uh, please, please forgive me if, uh, if I sort of <laughs> still find my way around. So I'm going to start the slide here. Let me see slide share. Okay, so I hope you can see that. Um, <clears throat> all right, so ANZA, it's a great group. Um, around this time last year, I did a tile tour and uh, that, was, that was great pre-COVID days. So here we are today um, looking at tiles uh, from the comfort of our home, which is not a big thing. <clears throat> so here are a couple of what we may call uh, heritage tiles, uh, Peranakan tiles, and I'd love you to use uh, the, the chat box. Uh, and let's see if we can do this. Um, who thinks they know what uh, Peranakan tiles are? If anybody wants to, to use the chat box. Um, some people call them uh, vintage tiles, heritage tiles, uh, imported tiles, but uh, they are called in Singapore's context uh, Peranakan tiles for, for an interesting reason. Now, some of you may have seen uh, these tiles in uh, places like uh, Katong, and today I'm going to be sharing with you ones that I have found um, at Booker Brown Cemetery. Now I've heard from Kerry that Anza has been taking a couple of uh, walking tours there. Um, it's probably a really nice area to stretch your legs and uh, get some nature. I know uh, not many apartments in Singapore um, have balconies, uh, so I can understand that's, that's really important. And I'm really happy to hear that. Now, these are some of the beautiful tiles that uh, I have uncovered through uh, a passion project called the Singapore Heritage Tile Project. And they are simply amazing. If you've been to uh, Emerald Hill, uh, Juchiat, uh, you may have seen uh, some tiles, but the tiles that I have uncovered uh, through my project um, have just simply blown me away. But how did I get started on this sort of niche area? Well, my personal connection to Singapore is through my father and in uh, 2012 I moved there with my husband and it was a, has, it has been a journey of um, amazing discovery. So my father took me to a place which you may be um, very familiar with and that is uh, Club Street. Um, yes, it had uh, quite a few movers and shakers in the old days. I'm not sure if my grandfather was really one of them, but uh, certainly he had um, he was a lighter boat federation chairman, I think, so um, he had some weight. And this two-storey house, you can see the tiles up the top, uh, was his. And um, having already gone around Juchat, I was pretty uh, pleased to discover that his shop house here um, had tiles. And as I later discovered, they were actually uh, Japanese tiles. Um, I'm a graduate of both Japanese and fine art, so I thought that was um, really an amazing coincidence. Here we have uh, clan house tiles. So through uh, history uh, volunteers, I happened to be chatting with some about my background and uh, a very generous people put time and effort into uncovering uh, a personal connection through my great grandfather to uh, this very unusual building on Cantonment Road. It probably looks like a sort of, um, uh, some sort of colonial, very fancy bungalow. It is in fact a, a clan house. And that means uh, everybody with the surname of Lim uh, is allowed to join this clan house. And in fact, my great grandfather was one of the founding members in 1928. Um, there you can see uh, European tiles uh, on the left there at the front entrance and also uh, traditional uh, tiles uh, tailor made to uh, Chinese, Chinese themes and Chinese tiles. These are actually uh, Japanese tiles. In fact, last year, uh, this time, I believe I took a tour of um, 
of ANZA members to see uh, this clan house. I must try to work out how to arrange it uh, remotely. And cemetery tiles. So Booker Brown Cemetery, I had no idea I had any kind of connection until uh, my uncle um, told me in late 2012 that I needed to come and do some family business at this appointed spot. And that appointed spot was uh, Booker Brown uh, Cemetery. And I was very um, taken away is one word uh, to be uh, attending the exhumation of my great grandfather and his brother. So it was that time that I learned that Booker Brown uh, was to have a highway run right through the middle of it. And unfortunately, uh, signs since then have showed that the cemetery um, may well be slated for future demolition. And so um, to cut a long story short, I decided to, to launch this project uh, last year. And I uncovered my Paranakan great-grandparents tomb and it features uh, a multiple, multiple, multiple numbers of uh, tiles. The, the peacock one in the middle is from Japan. Um, in fact, all of them are Japan, to be honest, uh, but some of them are sort of Chinese uh, feng shui themed tiles. And of course, animals, I think you see this cute duck. And the lady on the right is my uh, great grandmother, Ong, Sam, uh, Ong Leong Neo. Neo is often uh, a bit of a clue. If you heard someone with the name Neo, it usually means they are a Pranakan. So who are the Pranakans? Um, now, you've probably all heard of Pranakan food, um, of course, a bit spicy. Uh, it combines uh, the, maybe the best of Malay and Chinese uh, with a touch of Indian. But Pranakan people, Pranakan, the word is a, a relatively new term. I think it's sort of uh, Singapore tourism industry may have uh, really pushed this word during the 70s. But traditionally, people are known as uh, Baba for men and Nonya. So I'm called uh, Nonya Jennifer um, by my Pranakan friends. But uh, one of the most famous Pranakans, uh, and it's easier now to say this uh, in his passing, is the former Prime Minister, uh, Mr Lee Kuan Yew. And in fact, his aunt, uh, Singapore's first female doctor, uh, Dr Lee Chu Neo, is in fact resting uh, at Hill One, uh, that is very near the, the, po the main podium at, at Booker Brown. Uh, other famous Pranakans include uh, Dr Lim Boon King. And if you've seen uh, Crazy Rich Asians, um, that tall guy who's married to Astrid, who has a chip on his shoulder because he doesn't earn as much money as her. That is my <laughs> friend. Um, yes, the very handsome Pierre Pung. I have met him at a few Pranakan events. And of course, put opportunity playing onto his shoulder. So I will call him my <laughs> friend. But the word Pranakan is actually uh, a Malay word. It's a term for a locally born. And it's used to refer to the offspring of old time foreign traders and local women. Now, in the old days, this is before sort of love marriages. There are a lot of arranged marriages and um, ladies who are actually uh, slaves, to be honest, um, and bought for uh, by Chinese traders, uh, Arab traders, and also Indian traders who came to, to this part of the world. So what are Puranakan tiles? Well, many people use uh, this word because it seems that the, the Pranakans and many of them were made their money from being middlemen uh, between the British and newcomer Chinese, a Sin K. And it was perhaps this sort of um, status that Pranakans uh, often seem to have been interested in using uh, these kind of tiles, probably initially, initially started in their kitchens and then, you know, in their shop houses because you have that open uh, air well in that area and then they put them on the front as well just to you know just to show everybody um, how uh, cultured or how uh, non-newcomer they were. <clears throat> so the tiles that we mainly see around Singapore but especially at Book at Brown uh, tend to be English, uh, Belgium and Japanese in origin and the earliest tile that some of my friends have found dates back to uh, 1905. Um, now, the reason why the cemetery is so great, if that sounds really funny, is because the, the, the tombs have a date on them. So if my great-grandmother's tomb is 1936, we know the tiles are at least uh, from 1936, uh, usually, um, minus five, ten years 
uh, how long the time it took for them to be uh, produced and also very carefully uh, shipped to Singapore through the port, carefully carried up in the lorry and then carried up to uh, the higher parts of the hill where most of the more elaborate uh, tombs can be found because the feng shui is better, the outlook is better, so the higher, the higher you are um, is ideal. <clears throat> So Booker Brown Cemetery, as many of you know, is located uh, near McRitchie uh, Reservoir. And I sometimes call it a, um, an outdoor museum. And that is because it shows the cross-cultural uh, influences over a span of some uh, 70 years at least. And so I see it as a kind of a design archive. It's a cultural resource. And it's also a beautiful a nature reserve. And because the tiles are span between uh, what well, we say 1905 to um, just before the Second World War, you're covering a number of art movements. So you have aesthetic, Art Nouveau, Art Deco, um, all in one single hit. So that's really wonderful. Booker Brown Cemetery is actually um, one cemetery of about four. Um, so some people call it uh, all of them together, a Greater Booker Brown Cemetery complex. Um, where do they join together? It's really hard to know. It's not as if there's a dotted line. There are some rough maps. Um, but of course, the best tiles are always um, located in sort of really hard to reach areas, uh, to be honest, especially uh, the bigger tombs. But if you know how to find them, then, um, you know, that's wonderful. And did I know how to find them when I first started this project last year? Not at all. Um, the first time I wandered around the cemetery and after about half an hour with my friend, I decided that uh, I probably need some help. So it was then when I approached uh, cemetery volunteers, they put me in touch with a tomb keeper and with my two year old Chinese and his non-existent English, somehow we managed to uh, make each other understood. And since then he's been my right hand man in finding all these tiles. Now, it is a book at Brown Cemetery where we can see uh, local trends. And some, from the way I talk, may imagine that the whole uh, 80,000 known tombs at the cemetery are slathered with these beautiful imported tiles. That is not the case. So out of those 80,000 tombs, um, my two keeper friend and I estimate that less than 10% are covered with uh, tiles. Now, Let's have a look at the top left uh, uh, tomb here. This is actually my Chinese, so born in China and came over with his two sons. This is my great, great grandfather. Um, uh, what's his name again? Uh, Eok Hong Lim, Lim Eok Hock. And his tomb is decorated with all these papers. That's because we've um, been saying g'day. So uh, Qingming last year, uh, we went up there with my relatives and we scattered uh, various different colour paper um, and we lit candles, we gave offerings of food. I keep joking about bringing Vegemite sandwiches and lamingtons. Nobody seems to laugh, that joke is for me. Anyway, um, but you can see from his tomb that he has just got, uh, it's fairly simple actually, he doesn't even have very many carvings, but it's a typical womb shape, uh, but it's quite, it's quite plain. Whereas the less than 10% of tombs uh, that feature uh, in, my, in my project and upcoming book um, are more like this. So the big tomb we have on the right here <clears throat> is really quite amazing because it contains not a single character of Chinese. So it's completely in English. It has a marble headstone. Um, it has, I think, about uh, six different types of decorative tiles. And it has a portrait. So um, very, very English, uh, I suppose, to have this kind of ceramic portrait. There are some tombs at Booker Brown where uh, there is, in fact, a Pranakan lady, so a, a nonya, not just a young nonya, she's actually a bibik, so quite formidable in her long sarong kabaya with her hair up in a bun and a big pin and looking, you know, pretty fierce in her studio portrait, right down to her beaded slippers. Um, so to be able to look in with that picture, a picture to see see the lives, it, it, re it really is a quite quite amazing. On the left here, uh, this tomb is actually linked to um, 
also to World War II because it has damage in some of the European tiles. And we believe that damage is caused by um, uh, shrapnel. Uh, parts of Booker Brown were um, the last uh, scenes of fighting before the fall of Singapore. Um, it is rumoured that there are about a, a dozen um, uh, English uh, troops that are still uh, have not not been recovered from that area, and also um, rumours of, of mass burials uh, also during the war. So it definitely has a very strong, strong connection. Overseas influences. Well, well, um, these are the sorts of tiles that I have not seen uh, very often on shop houses. And they are exquisite. This one on the left is uh, very old because it is a single colour uh, transfer print. So if you're into uh, etching, uh, it's a very similar process where they have um, hand drawn on a sort of a greasy paper, actually more like lithograph, and printed it, um, printed it on to the surface of the tile before baking it. The one on the right, um, very uh, Art Nouveau, and uh, this was one of the very last ones to be professionally photographed for my project. Um, after 52 trips to the cemetery last year, I was a bit tired, um, but my cemetery tombkeeper friend, Arben, called me up and said, Jennifer, you have to see this. I said, no more. He said, no, no, please see this one. So, yes, this is the last lady. Uh, Chinese traditions. So, uh, if you are aware of some of these feng shui traditions, uh, being able to see the water, the mountains, uh, lots of trees, uh, two little lovebirds there, swans, boat, peacefully uh, carrying you to the, the next life. Um, there is a, a genre all by itself of, of these feng shui tiles. Um, Chinese, they must be local. No, they're not. They're custom made, uh, custom made, customized uh, for the Chinese market um, by Japanese tile makers, who also customized uh, designs for the Indian market as well. Um, but that is another topic. And over to the right here, you can see uh, auspicious creatures, uh, uh, English peacock, a very popular tile that the Jap Japanese sort of um, uh, reinterpreted, shall we say. And that may have been seen as something similar to the phoenix uh, in Chinese culture. Also auspicious fruits. Uh, we see uh, pomegranates, seeds, fertility, descendants, um, peaches, long life. And this funny little finger citron, which is kind of like a lemon, that's a play on words, uh, meaning uh, good luck. Um, my tile project uh, was primarily last year in the field, and we not only cleaned, because these ladies, uh, these tiles, having been 100 years old in the sunshine and heat, are pretty filthy. So to be able to photograph them professionally, um, I needed some help. And I was very fortunate to have uh, more than 100 volunteers uh, join me over multiple sessions. And we discovered, uh, well, it's mostly my tomb keeper discovered for me, uh, tombs like this. And they were literally under mud and had never, had, hadn't been visited for some 40 years. So, so sadly abandoned, not necessarily abandoned, but they just haven't been reconnected uh, with the descendants yet. And uh, the tomb on the right, this is actually a bench, uh, has two benches on either side of this very large tomb. These are for the descendants uh, to visit and pay their respects. We believe that this twin tiled bench tomb is one of a kind uh, in Singapore, let alone Southeast Asia. So we're very keen to, to, let, people, uh, to let people know where it is and, and spread the word. It's actually not that difficult uh, to get to. Maybe I'll talk to Kerry afterwards. <laughs> And how can you see more Pranakan tiles? Well, you may know of uh, Victor Lim. No, he's not my relative, but he could be. Um, but he runs a, a great uh, shop where you can buy both uh, vintage as well as um, replica tiles. Now, apparently in the 70s, uh, many shop houses were actually um, mm, developed uh, in Singapore. And so there were tiles that came off those shop houses and apparently Victor was uh, one of the ones to to see the future potential of them and that's hence why he has uh, so many uh, originals there. Um, NUS Barber House, I'm not sure if they're running tours again yet, but that is a terrific place uh, to see tiles because you can see them in their air well. And if you look very closely underneath the staircase, uh, hopefully they've moved the furniture by now, there's some 
very, very special tiles that I have seen nowhere else in Singapore. The great thing about NUS Bubba House is it probably typically represents a wealthy kind of shop house. I mean, a lot of money has been put into renovating this place, but I believe there are probably shop houses around Singapore that have um, wonderful tiles, but we'll never see them uh, because, you know, obviously the owners don't open them up to the public. Uh, some other places, just by chance, the Intan, uh, I believe, also has very beautiful tiles. Uh, Tian Hock King Temple uh, down on Telok Aya Street also has uh, nice floor tiles. Um, Wonderlust Hotel, I think that's in Dixon Road, um, that also has uh, very unusual tiles uh, on the front, right up to, I think, the third story. And of course, East Coast Road and um, Ang Siang Hill and places around there. So these tiles, this project, Singapore Heritage Tile Project, is all about um, giving the, the past to our future. This is my daughter on, uh, I think we made two or three trips together. She said it was the hottest place in Singapore. <laughs> um, but uh, she, is, she is part of the reason uh, why I am um, continuing this project and working towards a, a book that will be out uh, later next year. I also have a calendar, a 2012 calendar. Some of the pictures are here behind me and you can see all that and more um, at my website, uh, jenniferlimart.com. So please come and visit, sign up to my uh, newsletter, um, visit me on Facebook and uh, it would be great if you could share the tiled love. I'll um, stop this video presentation part here. I'll just stop this for the moment. I'm back on and... If you'd like to unmute yourself, I'm um, happy to take any questions. I do have a few already. Okay, where are we? Okay. All right. Well, one of the questions um, I did get, you can also raise your hand here or put, put a question in the chat box uh, if you like. I don't know if you've seen it here. I'll just put another message there. Um, one of the questions I, I did get uh, regarding tiles at Booker Brown Cemetery is, who chose the tiles? Um, <clears throat> that's a great question. Now, for really elaborate tombs, um, often the plot of land was bought way ahead of time. So uh, <laughs> I know it's kind of funny to think people not only bought their plots of land ahead of time, uh, they also bought coffins. And rumour has it that some people even lacquered them and sort of laid, laid them and tested them every now and again. But uh, your, your plot, and um, was very important to the future of your descendants. And that might sound a little strange, but it's all about the Chinese traditional belief is all about having descendants, continuing your line, continuing your surname. Um, and that's why on tombs you'll see um, not only the husband or wife who's still living, but you'll also see uh, the sons, uh, sometimes the daughters, uh, and the grandsons, and, and, and so on. And so it really is like a visual family tree where you can line them all up. Now, who chose the tiles? Um, it's really hard to tell, but sometimes I see tombs that are men's tombs and they have an incredibly flower, flower, um, floral patterns, you know, in, in pink and, and, and yellow and so on. And it makes me think, hmm, maybe... And maybe, maybe the husband died suddenly and the wife chose the tiles and she's going to be visiting anyway. Um, but uh, but who's, who's to know? So if you'd like to check out uh, Book at Brown Cemetery, like I said, I believe Anza is, is running uh, walks and, and tours there when they can. Uh, cemetery volunteers uh, also uh, run tours from time to time. Um, and there's also a, uh, a guide called the Wayfinder, which I may share with Kerry later. That is a, a downloadable guide, um, probably best to see on your PC since it's about 100 pages. But that uh, gives you a, a little bit of a map and an insight uh, into where, where some of the more um, spectacular star tombs are. I'm also working on a few uh, maps and uh, more detailed information as well. Okay, well, if there are no further questions, I think we've almost gone to half an hour. So thank you very much for joining me today. This is the, the first webinar I've publicly done, so I really thank you for your patience and hope that the audio and, and everything was, was, was clear. Um, if you do have any further questions, just drop them to Kerry, or like I said, uh, come and visit me uh, at my website and I'll, I'll take them from there. Okay. All right, thank you so much, everybody. Um, 
have a great day and um, talk to you soon. Bye for now.